This is a Seeking Delphi Special Edition, South by Southwest 2018 Intelligent Future Minicast Number 2, recorded March 11, 2018 in Austin, Texas. I'm Mark Sackler. The future lives here. One step beyond the questions of machine intelligence are the questions of machine consciousness. Can we create it? Should we create it? How should we treat it? As anyone who has watched the popular HBO series Westworld knows, these questions go beyond the technical and ethical and enter into the realm of the existential. My focus today is on a single session held in the Intelligent Future interactive track at South by Southwest. Can we create consciousness in a machine? Its title belied a much deeper, even philosophical theme. Appropriately, the panel included two philosophers. We hear from them both now. David Chalmers is with the NYU Center for Mind and Brain Consciousness. Mm -hmm. David, in today's session, you talked about consciousness being a hard problem versus intelligence. Uh, Explain that. Well, intelligence, as I understand it, is all about behavior. Sophisticated, goal-directed behavior. You want to drive your car across town, Well, you need to um, know how to navigate, you need to know where to go, you need to drive the car. That's all sophisticated, goal-directed behavior. That's intelligence. It's objective. Consciousness is subjective. It's all about how it feels from the inside. You might experience the steering wheel against your hand. You might feel some pain. You might feel the car move. Consciousness is how it feels from the inside. So intelligence is all about behavior. Consciousness is all about the subjective experience. Right now, we know how to get machines to behave increasingly intelligently. We don't know how to get machines to be conscious. Uh, Is that an issue also of not knowing exactly what consciousness is in terms of how it emerges? That's completely right. We don't understand consciousness even in humans. We know that humans are conscious. We know that humans are intelligent too. But we've got theories of how humans can exhibit intelligent behavior. We have no really good theories of how and why it is that humans have subjective experience. There's some very tentative and speculative theories out there, but the reason we call this the hard problem is we just don't right now have a grip on what it would be to have a theory of consciousness. And finally, so we talked about can we create it? The other issue that that was devoted to much of this session is should we? Everybody seemed to be in favor of that. What are your shoulds? Well, I think it's a complicated ethical question. I mean, once we create machines that are conscious, we have to worry about how we treat them. Once they're conscious, they can suffer. Um, Once you've created conscious machines, they'll be like humans and they'll be admitted into our circle of moral concern. So in some ways, it'd be a lot easier if we could create artificial intelligence. I mean, just say all of our self-driving cars to be the best self-driving cars they are, they're conscious. Then we've got to worry if we're mistreating them by making them drive around town all the time. Much better create, to create self-driving cars that are not conscious and then we can just treat them as tools that serve our purposes. There seem to be arguments for why we should make them conscious. Uh, what were yours? Well, I just think probably we're going to want to create increasingly intelligent artificial systems in order to do more and more sophisticated things. And I think as they become increasingly intelligent, they're going to get more and more complex. They're going to involve mechanisms like the mechanisms we have in a human brain. They will probably become conscious. It may be impossible to have a super intelligent artificial intelligence without consciousness. So then we're going to be stuck with those hard questions. Susan Schneider is with the Department of Cognitive Sciences at the University of Connecticut. Susan, in today's program, you had a kind of a list of three things that you said are part of the steps to creating and identifying consciousness in a machine. Could you recount those briefly? Well, I think you need to run tests, and I'm interested in particular on in three tests. So a first test would be what I call the ACT test, where you look for behavioral indications that the machine understands thought experiments involving consciousness. So, you know, notice that most of us 
can understand the idea of reincarnation, out-of-body experiences, or the famous hard problem of consciousness. Um, if a machine starts to show interest and understanding of these problems, that would be one indication of consciousness. There are others, though. There are two other tests. So one, um, Christoph Koch talked about today, involving the information integration theory, um, in which you look for causal integration at a suitable level for um, the kind of sophisticated consciousness that you would expect in sentient beings. Another is a chip test, and you can view my TED Talk uh, to see more about that. But the idea is that at some point, um, if neurotechnology continues to develop chips to replace parts of the brain, uh, neural prosthetics, we might eventually see parts of the brain replaced that underlie conscious experience. So if we see that there are defects in consciousness that just can't be remedied by any chip and after years and years of trying we might rightly conclude that that kind of microchip uh, say you know a certain type of silicon microchip would be not sufficient it doesn't have the right stuff for conscious experience on the other hand if we start to see that the chips work then we might conclude that the type of substrate being used, you know, there are different kinds of substrates for microchips, would actually underlie conscious experience in the right kind of systems. And of course, we'd have to follow it up with research on the types of architecture in which consciousness is fruitfully said to be present. In terms of the moral issue, all right, without getting off on a long tree, Tyson, on this, in terms of the moral issues, we talked about, oh, we got to treat them ethically, and maybe also if we, we, you know, if we make them conscious, they'll be more moral. But what about the morality uh, simply of creating a consciousness that might be confined, might suffer, might whatever? Um, I, you know, people talk about the, the morality of cloning. Uh, what's, what's the identity of that clone going to be? Well, what's, right. the, what's the identity of the conscious machine going to be, and is that ethical? We have to think very carefully about the use that a conscious system could be put in. Um, for instance, if we start seeing that a robot soldier um, experiences pain and suffering, then we have to ask whether it's even appropriate to put it into situations where the whole idea was supposed to you know, was supposed to be to avoid human suffering, right? Um, and then if we start to dial out consciousness in that system, we have to ask if it's ethical to, quote, dial consciousness out of a system. Um, so I think there are a lot of ethical issues here. Um, we certainly don't want iRobot-like scenarios in which we have a slave class. Um, it would be bad for us, and it would be bad for them. One final question here, and this is the one thing, and every time I think I've heard the last question about this, I think of another one, and that one is, you know, emotion AI is big now, um, th th creating machines that can, uh, autonomous yeah. systems that recognize emotion, mach systems that can emulate it, eventually maybe they're going to feel it. Right. But in terms of being able to feel it, which is part of consciousness, there's one thing in the human experience that nothing in, I don't think in silicon is going to have, that it's certainly going to be hard to recreate, and that's the visceral experience of emotion. What, how does that come into play? Well, if we're sophisticated enough to create artificial general intelligences that behave in a human-like fashion, it may be that we're sophisticated enough to give them a visceral feeling of what it's like. I mean, you know, we might be able to find a great way of understanding, um, you know, the computational properties of the body that impact the brain. I mean, apparently there are lots of neurons in the gut. I mean, there's no reason in principle why we can't try to program those into an AI. Um, but I've also indicated a degree of skepticism about the possibility of being able to find an appropriate substrate or that AI companies would even want to do that. Maybe someone would try. Maybe there'd be like some sort of AI moonshot project to get an embodied AI with visceral feelings and, um, you know, emotions and whatnot. You never know. As to the question of how long it might be before we create a conscious machine, David Chalmers was the most optimistic, saying perhaps within 20 years. Susan Schneider was uncertain and noncommittal, while a third panelist simply said, not in our lifetime. There's more to come from the interactive tracks at South by Southwest 2018. 
My thanks to Interpros and IEEE for arranging today's interviews, as well as many others. Until next time, I'm Mark Zackler.